In this presentation, we'll look at the ethical and legal repercussions around the production of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 airplane. In 2014, Airbus announced a new airplane that would use larger engines to increase fuel efficiency. In order to retain market position, Boeing had to release a competing model in a tight time frame and decided to add larger engines to an existing airframe, the 737. However, there was not enough ground clearance to add the larger engines in the same position, so they were moved to be further forward on the wing, resulting in a changing of the center line of the engine's thrust. To remedy this, a software correction called the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS, was implemented. MCAS overrides pilot input and pitches the nose down to avoid stall. The 737 MAX is currently grounded worldwide after the crash in October 2018 of Lion Air Flight 610, followed less than four months later by Ethiopian Air Flight 302, killing a total of 346 people. Subsequent investigations placed the blame on the altered flight characteristics of the airplane, which were not disclosed, as well as on the MCAS system, which was not men mentioned in the pilot training and had only a brief paragraph in the flight manual. In considering the ethical issues around the crashes, the big picture is that Boeing failed to address the risk of safety to the public stemming from the limitations of the MCAS system, since Boeing violated the professional misconduct section of the PEA. By limiting flight testing due to cost and time pressures and failing to disclose the limitations and existence of the MCAS system, they violated section 72.2A which constitutes negligence. They also violated Section 72.2b, Failure to Safeguard Life, by relying on a single point of failure, a known-to-be-faulty angle of attack sensor. And by knowing about these issues and failing to rectify them or inform the public about them, they violated Section 72.2c. There were also professional ethics violations of the PEA by Boeing. By failing to implement the MCAS system correctly or to disclose its limitations, they violated both Section 77.21 and Section 77.11 of the Act. And by caving to cost and money pressures from their bosses, they failed to pursue the highest integrity of the, of the profession. Alternative courses of action for Boeing to have taken would have been to allocate more resources in order to achieve the project within the expected timeline, to ask for a timeline extension, which seems unlikely given the time pressures on them, or to increase testing to ensure that the final product was fully safe. Given the time pressures on Boeing to release the 737 quickly, they should have expanded the team working on it in order to achieve those time goals. There should have also been more testing of potential failure scenarios and extra redundancies like sensors, which, would, which should have been added to account for unknown scenarios. This would have cost more money, but would have helped save lives. For the victims of these crashes, there are two potential courses of remedy. We will first look at torts. In a tort case, the case will be filed against Boeing, the defendant, by the airlines or the families of the victims, who will be the plaintiffs. There is a three-part test for tort cases. In this scenario, the duty of care was for Boeing to produce an airplane that had predictable handling characteristics and safe aerodynamics. There was a breach of duty because they were aware that the 737 MAX had different ha handling characteristics than what they claimed. And the losses to claimants are economic in the case of the airlines and loss of life in the case of the victim's families. In terms of precedents for tort case against Boeing, the airline's case is bolstered by Headley v. Byrne, which affirmed that pure economic losses due to negligent misstatement can be recovered. For the families, they can rely on Donahue v. Stevenson, which ruled that there is a duty of care even without a contract. The case also has many similarities to the GM ignition switch recall in that the manufacturer had been aware of technical issues which had then been brushed aside due to cost implications. There are also claims to be made against Boeing by the airlines under contract law. One of the major inducements to purchase was the lack of additional pilot training and the similarity of the handling of the 737 MAX to the older 737 models. There are three primary contract law precedents for this case. Although there is a surface similarity to Derry v. Peak, because Boeing knew internally about the handling differences between the 737 MAX and its predecessors, 
the case is closer to Doyle v. Olby. In this scenario, the, the, the plaintiff can claim all damages flowing from mis misrepresentation as well as laying the groundwork for tort by deceit. Additionally, in BC Rail v. CP Consulting, it was ruled that the standard may increase if a professional represents special skills or expertise, which in this scenario, Boeing did. Legally, there is a case to be made for misrepresentation. Depending on further discovery, it could be innocent misrepresentation, which is unintentional and has reduced liability for Boeing, or negligent misrepresentation, where a representation was made carelessly and has the maximum liability for Boeing. 